So good morning ladies and gentlemen and thank you for joining me for another first ride review. Today I'm out on this beautiful Suzuki Hayabusa. So I haven't ridden the previous two generations of Hayabusa so this is all new to me so that's what this video is going to be about. Um, the opinions and views of somebody that's never ridden a Hayabusa before. Looks wise um, I'll have to admit I didn't particularly like the look of this when I saw pictures and videos of it but like many things in the flesh, I think it actually looks okay. These exhausts are bigger than some islands that we have in the UK, but apparently they're two kilos lighter than the uh, previous generation. That's very clever engineering. So let's throw a leg over and carry on. So before I throw my leg over, actually, let's just give you a sample of the noise. The dash starts up there, very nice. Analog clocks, which is a thing of beauty. One touch start, very nice. It being Euro 5, it is, of course, not very loud. But it does sound rather throaty. Right, throwing my leg over. Now, I, I am on uneven ground here. So, 800 millimeter seat height, I can pretty much flat foot it. 800 millimeters is around about 31.5 inches, I believe. Uh, 20 litre fuel tank. So good enough for a bit of touring, if that's your thing. Um, right, so let's uh, let's get going, shall we? Talk about this lovely, lovely machine. So this is a notoriously bumpy road, so it'll be interesting to see how the suspension copes with the uh, bumps. The bumps and the jumps. Ooh. The weather was set to be quite nice today, but it doesn't look too clever at the moment. We'll see how it uh, how it goes. All right, so let's talk about the engine. That 1,340 cc inline four, and it makes 100 and 187 horsepower at 9,700 rpm, and 150 newton meters of torque. And that's at 7,000 RPM. And the bike red lines at 11,000 RPM, so you kind of know where it's at in the rev range. As I said, brakes, those uh, Brembo Stylemas, which need no introduction, they are absolutely brilliant. And those bite down onto 320 mil discs. And at the rear, we have a single piston caliper. I don't know the size of the disc, they don't actually quote that in the uh, spec sheet. But um, yeah, we'll uh, talk about the brake performance in a bit. Suspension, we have Kayaba 43mm upside down forks up front. And those are fully adjustable and a link type shock at the rear. Again, fully adjustable. We have 120mm travel at the front and I don't know how much at the back because they don't quote the figures. As I said, 20 litre fuel tank. The bike weighs 264 kilograms fully fueled and ready to rip. <laughs> yeah. So this is my first ride in anger. I did pick this bike up from uh, Suzuki, which is in Milton Keynes, about an hour and a half away from me. But I rode it in the pouring rain on the M25, which was um, not very fun, I'll be honest. But uh, actually the bike was uh, very well mannered. So let's talk about electronics. And do you know what? There's so much electronic trickery on this bike that um, you'll have to forgive me if I forget something because there is just so much to remember. So it's got a six axis IMU. <laughs> so that means lean sensitive traction control, ABS, we have launch control, we have cruise control, we have hill hold control, we have lots and lots and lots of goodies. It's got uh, wheelie control, it's got uh, rear wheel lift control which basically stops the rear wheel from lifting if you're going downhill and braking rather in a, in a rather spirited fashion shall we say <laughs> it's 
roads are a bit wet. Actually, the suspension's doing a pretty good job, to be fair. I was expecting it to be really crashy, and it's not. Uh, yeah, so going back to electronics, it's got, like, as I said, six axis everything, which means, you know, all those good bits and bobs. Uh, riding modes, you've got uh, three main riding modes, A, B and C, which I don't know if you can see that on the dash, but I'll stick some B-roll in. Uh, a being active, B being basic and C being comfort. Looking at this bike, it's extremely long. Uh, 2,180 millimetres or 86 inches, there or thereabouts. Oh, um, yeah, it's... Um, I kind of thought... Going this way? I think we are going this way. Uh, that it would be really cumbersome and only good in a straight line. Whew. I mean, it is ridiculously fast in a straight line, of course. It certainly is a lot more nimble than you'd have thought. So yeah, that suspension, ever so plush. I mean, in the current settings, I wouldn't change a thing. I think it's perfect certainly for the road um, but yeah it's a fully adjustable so if you did want it a bit firmer or even softer still and I can't imagine you would oh white white truck in the way so uh, let's talk about ergos then seating position now I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you it is a sports bike position it's nowhere near as extreme as uh, say the fireblade that had my knees up by my ears this is a lot more comfortable but still very sports bike in nature uh, but this year they've brought the clip-ons 12 millimeters more towards the rider over the previous generation and that's just to be a bit more comfortable for you um, seat is very comfortable no complaints so far and actually riding it back on the motorway I didn't have any issues with the seat I did have a bit of wrist ache doing the uh, slower speed stuff so after a while this does get a bit tiresome for me but uh, I'm sure many of you would not have an issue with it. You can grip your legs, of course, and that takes all the weight off your wrists, but then your legs get a bit tired. And even though I do do squats and deadlifts, it seems I need to do more. <laughs> uh, low speed characteristics are very, very, very good, actually. It's um, an easy bike to ride. It doesn't feel kind of cumbersome or unwieldy. You know, it's not agile as, as a street triple, but uh, it is pretty good. So a bit of history actually, in 1997 Honda released their Blackbird, which they called the CBR 1100X I believe. And then in 1999 Suzuki were like, well, hold my beer, because we also want a slice of that action, because the Blackbird was the fastest production bike ever made up until that point. And then of course the booster came along and then that was the fastest production bike ever made. So the word Hayabusa actually means peregrine falcon. And if you know anything about peregrine falcons is they eat blackbirds. So some nice marketing from, uh, from Suzuki there. <laughs> a rather aggressive campaign but one that uh, has certainly got the bike a cult following. And uh, seemingly with good reason because it is you know it seems to be just a fantastic machine now i don't know if you can hear me because the airflow is directed right at my face unfortunately that's just the kind of shape of the bike so this bike also has a quick shifter both up and down and it is lovely and smooth even from first to second at low rpm it's buttery buttery smooth well done suzuki that's fantastic uh, throttle response even in a mode lovely and smooth but it's a very smooth natured engine effortlessly powerful you kind of can short shift all over the place because you can just rely on the torque uh, there's nothing around so I'm going to test the brakes oh yeah okay Stylema's living up to the name of being the best kind of brakes for production motorcycles now initially there's not that much bite but once again, you know, once you start feeding pressure into that lever, they uh, they come alive. Switch gear, all very functional. You've got your mode button there, that's 
nice and easy and it cycles through all the bits on the dash. So you cycle through your um, riding modes, traction control and power. So let's talk about the riding modes. You have those three riding modes, A, B and C, and they kind of manage everything all into one. There's, I think they call it Suzuki Intelligent Ride System, and that manages the five major electronic systems in those riding modes. And you'll see something called SDMS, and that's Suzuki Drive Mode Selector, as far as my memory serves me. We have a uh, slipper clutch as well, so if you do want to use the clutch, it's um, it's not the lightest clutch, it's hydraulic, but uh, it does work very, very well. We have adjusters on both levers, which is good. Down to a 30 again, let's go down to second. Yeah, so slow stuff, after a while you do get a bit of wrist ache, well I do anyway. My lower back is starting to hurt, but my bottom is very happy and comfortable. Um, touring wise, you could if you were so inclined, you could go touring on one of these. Um, I could if I wanted to, but I have to admit, I would probably choose something a little more comfortable, personally. But that's just personal preference. So, uh, going back to the electronics, yes, you've got those three riding modes, uh, A, B and C. And in each mode, there is a power level and a traction control level. But you can also change stuff like engine braking, uh, how much anti-lift, uh, anti-wheelie you want, anti-rear lift, which kind of also stops the uh, rear wheel from locking up as well. I think it's one of these bikes that uh, if you rode it, or if I rode it for a while, I'd get used to the seating position and kind of work those muscles that I don't usually work on a more upright motorcycle. We've got cruise control, there's a little set button over on the right there, which is nice and easy to get to. I mean, you can feel the weight. But it's nowhere near as bad as you'd imagine at 264 kilograms. So this bike has a uh, Bridgestone Battleax Hypersport S22 tyres, and those were designed specifically with Bridgestone. And they were specific to this bike. A brand new tyre for the to match the performance and power of this beast. It has an all aluminium frame and it has a 50-50 weight distribution just to make things lovely and balanced. And I would like to say that I can feel that when I'm riding but uh, I kind of just have to take their word for it. So specs wise I don't think there's too much more I can tell you without boring you to death. But uh, just, you know, it's got a ton of power, it's got all the electronics you could possibly imagine and more. The gearbox is lovely and smooth, suspension is actually rather plush firm but plush and uh, it's just like I said I'm going to keep saying that word it's just effortless to ride so top speed of this bike is an alleged 186 miles an hour and that's a very specific number because the Japanese and European manufacturers kind of got together and decided instead of facing some bands they decided to limit the uh, output of their bikes because bikes were kind of being scrutinised at the time back in the back in the 90s some of them just had ridiculous amounts of power I mean what 186 miles an hour isn't exactly slow is it it's pretty ridiculous already it's just so easy it's so stable in the bend like mid corner it just uh, needs no other inputs you point it where you want to go and it just goes there What an absolute beast! Oh, I had to open it up and that that is something else at the top. It just builds momentum so quickly. So gutted I didn't get to the launch of this. But unfortunately I hadn't really had the contact with Suzuki up until after that launch. But uh, I would have loved to have given this full beans on that runway. It would have been awesome. So I'm very jealous of everyone that got to go. You know who you are. <laughs> what a bike! Woo! It seems really kind of uh, manageable on docile low down, even in A mode. But uh, when you let the revs build towards that peak torque figure, it really flies. It doesn't like pull your arms off because it's so low, but it just propels you. 
just propels you at a rate of knots. Whew. So let's talk about some negatives then. I'll be honest, because I had such, I won't say low expectations, but because I had no real expectations, I didn't expect to like it, it's rather difficult to find fault. Some people won't like the analog clocks, but I think they look pretty cool. You've even got an analog fuel gauge and temperature gauge, rev counter and speedometer. You've got that nice little TFT in the middle. I think the screen could have had like a little lip on it just to make, because uh, this flaps around a bit in the window if you've noticed, but that does flap around a bit. So perhaps um, a little lip will make the bubble a bit higher. I can't really think of anything else, just being honest. Price-wise, it's uh, £16,500 there or thereabouts. That's in the UK. I don't, obviously I can't sit there and tell you what it is for each country. Some people say this is a hyperbike, which I kind of disagree with because it's, I'd say it's a bit softer than I imagine a hyperbike to be. I don't think I've ridden a hyperbike yet. For me, this bike would sit in the sport tourer category, but maybe like ultra hyper sport tourer, but definitely more leaning towards the sports bike because of the uh, seating position and the ergonomics. So functional things and mirrors, while they look a bit strange, kind of droopy, like droopy is, but they, uh, they actually work really well. Not much in terms of vibration and I can see perfectly clear out of both mirrors. A little bit of elbow, but uh, not too bad. Very usable. The switch gear is all very reachable, nothing really in an annoying position. It's actually quite simple, I quite like it actually. So good job Suzuki for not over cluttering your switch gear. Certainly with a bike with this much electronic gizmos, it could have been a lot more cluttered. <laughs> <Yeah! laughs> so uh, my buddy Rob rode this bike, kind of before I did actually, and uh, it was actually good to see someone else ride it because it uh, made me realise how good this bike looks on the road. I quite like the uh, chunky rear end. Yeah, the good thing about this bike is uh, it makes overtakes so easy. So, so easy. So, GS rider, will he nod? He did, there you go. Proof. GS riders do nod at other bikers. And I'm on a higher booster, so he should absolutely despise me, right? Yeah, so slower stuff, the bike is not all that comfortable. I've got lower back pain and wrist ache, but my knees, surprisingly, hello, um, are very, very comfortable. I don't know if that's something that would last. I dare say it wouldn't, but uh, yeah. And I know everybody's gonna say, well, Dan, you should be gripping the tank with your legs. And I agree, but I can't do that all the time because I'm not an Olympic athlete. <laughs> what a bike. Gentlemen. It's actually rare to see workers work during the day, right? It's uh, somewhat of a rarity. What a bike. What an absolutely bonkers, yet perfectly rideable machine. Kind of makes you just feel like a bit of a god, really. I've had the front wheel lift a little bit, but uh, it being so long, kind of has this natural anti-wheelie built into the design. Whoa, the rear wheel spin there, There's some gravel, a bit of spinach. Right, we're at Lumi's, time for a cup of tea. How very British. Hope you have enjoyed the video, guys. If you do go out today, do ride safely, but remember to have fun, of course. Don't forget, I'm on Patreon. Link will be in the description. Uh, but as always, take care until the next one. Peace.